Hello. Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are live again. Thank you so much for oh, joining yes. us. And we're going to be taking a look into some really intriguing antiques here today. Uh, first, I'm Amber. I'll be handling your questions. So if you have any comments or questions, just leave them in the chat and we'll get to all of them. And most importantly, it is Gabriela Hernandez. Hooray. Yay. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to be showing you some theatrical makeup. So we're going to go into uh, the theater and see what people use at the turn of the century to put on their makeup and what uh, what kind of makeup they had available and, and kind of what it looked like and what it felt like uh, for a, a, a performer, an artist, uh, a, an actor uh, to put on their makeup. So that's what I'm gonna show to you today. Yay, I'm so excited. And with these, if you have questions yeah. about the makeup that Gabrielle is showing, please ask. If you have other questions, we're all open. We're, we love hearing mm -hmm. feedback from all of that. So feel free to just ask that in the chat as much as you like. And yeah, let's get started. Yeah. These are, I mean, all of these are awesome. like 100 years old or more, I think, today. So I'm very, very Yes, excited. yes. M mo yeah, most of these pieces are from the 20s. Uh, so uh, we're going to show you a bit of uh, Max Factor things, uh, a couple of other brands that were competitors of Stein makeup at the time, which was the, you know, the kind of the premier makeup manufacturer for performers or theater in general was, uh, was a brand called Stein's. They came from Europe and uh, they mainly made uh, a lot of stick makeup. So a lot of like kind of something that looked like a chubby crayon and, and it came in different uh, colors and, and it was very thick, obviously. So it held the shape of, of this crayon. And then they would draw on their faces with that and spread it uh, on top of like a heavy layer of cold cream. Um, so this is kind of the type of makeup they had. And then they would set it with a bunch of powder on the top. So it was rather thick. Uh, it would leave a really thick kind of makeup application on the face. And and the, the problem they had with this is like that it would crack as the actors would, you know, do all the kinds of different uh, motions with their face and that it would crack in the, in the, the seams because the, the makeup was so thick and it had this, you know, really mask-like quality to it because of the fact that they had to use, uh, you know, the, the uh, cream and then all these sticks and then, a, a, very uh, heavy application of powder. So, so this is um, what I'm going to show you today. It's it's kind of the next step, the next evolution of of makeup. So from these uh, kind of stick makeup uh, type of really hard makeup uh, uh, type of uh, formulas, it went into um, a formula that Max Factor developed that was in his Supreme line. It was called Supreme at the time. This line of makeup. Uh, he developed it in um, early, like 19, you know, 13, 1914, uh, but uh, it didn't actually get uh, uh, used by most of the industry people until the 20s. So uh, around 1923 or so is when this, this makeup began to really be used by a lot of performers. Um, so, uh, so what he developed was called grease paint. Uh, so uh, now it seems very old fashioned grease paint, but at the time grease paint was kind of revolutionary because, because it was in a, a, a paint container, kind of like a tube, and you could squeeze mm -hmm. it out. So it was uh, way more um, liquidy and more, um, uh, it could be thinned out quite a bit on the face. So it didn't leave this kind of really mask-like feel it was far more natural looking than the alternative. And, and uh, flexible actually meant that it would flex with your skin as you moved your face, and which was an important thing for the actors because remember they had uh, come with a lot of makeup before that would really crack under uh, yeah. the lights and, and, and all the performances. So, so the flexibility was a big selling point and that's why actually it's in the name of the product. It's called flexible grease paint. <laughs> um, <laughs> so let me show you some of these sets now. Uh, I have uh, a set here that I can show you. This is a Max Factor set. You can see this logo here actually is his, um, his logo that he used on 
on his society makeup line. So he used this logo on the line that would later be sold to consumers uh, instead of actually just theater people. So, uh, so this was a, a makeup set um, that uh, you, here you can see it says a stage makeup kit. Oh, cool. um, and it's for a male. So it came for females or males. So you could get uh, one uh, depending on uh, female or male. Uh, and, uh, and it had everything you needed in this box. See, so uh, you, you says is that it was a student makeup kit. So this would be a more um, affordable type of makeup set for students. Um, and it has, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of has smaller sizes of these containers for mm -hmm. a student that wasn't using it all the time as a professional would have been. So, uh, so it has everything in there. And then it has this uh, handy card on here uh, that would tell you um, what to use for different characters. So oh, see, wow. it's like, it says colors for straight makeup. And then it tells you the, uh, the grease paint or, or, and then the, uh, the type of, uh, of colors for a juvenile, for a, an elderly woman, and so they would change the colors depending on what you wanted to do, uh, you know, and it tells you what, uh, what uh, face powder, what uh, moist rouge, uh, under rouge, dry rouge, lining color and pencil you would use for any of these characters. So you have a female juvenile, male juvenile, elderly woman, elderly man. And then on the bottom here, they have colors for Chinese, Spanish, Hindu types. So they would have oh, colors <laughs> depending if you wanted it. Yeah, obviously this was uh, a different time. Uh, yeah, and not uh, we would and they ever, would tell you want people to do today, but yeah, old, not old not not ago. not to do today, but no. but uh, but they did they did detail this out on here so that wow. you would know, uh, <laughs> which is kind of really interesting. Um, so this is kind of interesting. You have all your your things here. So in your set, uh, as you can see, you have the Max Factor uh, puff. So the, with this puff, you would use to put your face powder on and seal the makeup. Um, you would have your grease paints, which are these here. And you can see they have a number on here. So the number indicates what color it is. And if you look back on the chart, it would tell you what color to use depending on what you were doing. So this is it's number 12. This is number eight number seven, number five. So all these are different shades on here. And, uh, and you can see like after all these years, this is still, this is still uh, in, wow. you know, in, I guess, usable shape if you were to want to use. It's very, very <laughs> pink though, this color, but maybe this was yeah. a juvenile color and that's why it was pinker. Uh, but uh, yeah, and it says on the back here, which is very important for the time, do not use cold cream uh, base. Apply sparingly, uh, spreading as far as, uh, as accessible uh, for further directions. Uh, you look at the booklet. But basically, you would just use this straight and not have to use the cold cream because it was already a cream. So yeah. let's look at this color here. You can see if I put some of this out, it's still... It still comes out of this uh, wow. container rather well. It's a little oily, but uh, you can see, look at this color here. Whoa. It's not bad. That's a base, <laughs> like a foundation This color? is a base color. This Whoa. is foundation. So you can see, you can see how, uh, what color this was. Maybe again, this was maybe for a jewel. Yeah, it was exactly right. Look at that. See, um, if you look right here, uh, the juvenile uh, color, was uh, uh, seven a and this is seven a. Wow. <laughs> so, oh, wow. so you said so, so if you were trying to be a, a younger uh, person, you would use yeah. uh, this color. Uh, yes. And yeah, see how pink it is. You can see how how pink this is as a foundation. Uh, but maybe you know, I guess a pink uh, uh, thing was was something that um, that you know denoted youth uh, and. Yeah. So can this you, one is a five and, five and a half. Oh, yeah. Can you try to yeah. smudge it just a yeah. little bit more just to see like when it shears out, you know, like what it looks like a little bit? I'm just curious about that. Right now. 
Oh, it still like really has that pigment very strong. Wow. Yeah, so a couple it's questions. very, very, very pink. Wow. Does it smell like anything? Does it like smell unusual at all? It has a perfumey smell oh. with a bit of rancid oil. <laughs> yeah. That's... Like rancid oil with a perfume, but it didn't have a fragrance <laughs> because I can still smell it. It's like a floral fragrance, um, but but it has this, this uh, kind of oil, kind of like rancid oil because obviously this would have yeah. had like a castor oil in it or something like okay. that, which after all these years, it smells like, you know, rancid oil. Um, but uh, this is a, a five and a half. So this would be for an elderly uh, man. Okay. So this is, would be an elderly man color. So uh, let's look at that. Let's put a little bit of that on here. Um, okay. So elderly man. Uh, Okay, interesting. And that seems a little thinner and just a tad, maybe just how Yeah, it and it's a little, and it, yeah, and it's it just uh, a, a little, a little darker skin tone, but definitely not as mm -hmm. pink as the juvenile color. Yeah. So very interesting, this one. This is, uh, this is the elderly man. Uh, then uh, we have, let's see, what else we have on here? I don't know. Would the, uh, the colors have the changed number, over time, yeah. do you think? Um, the colors, yes, w would have changed over time, but remember these are theatrical colors. So they were yeah. really meant for people to do character. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like to necessarily match your skin tone, but it's like, you're trying to represent a character and they, yeah. you know, in the theater, they would do it with makeup. So, um, so this is a number eight. Um, this was supposed to be Spanish. So this is okay. if you were trying to be and again, uh, we're not to saying do a this is good <laughs> or anything like no, that. It's just no, we're saying an this old is, this old is thing. this is very old uh, old makeup. And look at this color here. So mm -hmm. very uh, very very tan here uh, for a Spanish mm -hmm. uh, skin tone. So you can see how how dark that is. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'm Spanish, but I don't look like that. Much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know, it doesn't quite matter. Uh, it's a, uh, it's kind of inter, it's kind of interesting that they would think that a Spanish, uh, a Spanish makeup would be some something this uh, deeper, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. So so that 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 was the Spanish one, um, which is kind of quite interesting. Uh. That that you know. A day. Yeah. Um. And this is. This is even darker. If you wanted uh, somebody uh, even darker, uh, it went even 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 on this. This is really dark. Um, oh boy, I don't know what I did with this thing, but it won't go back in. <laughs> and what kind of ingredients I don't know what other happened than with castor this oil? Um, what other kind of ingredients were used for these? Uh, this, these were, um, these were uh, made, uh, primarily with the base and oils. Uh, so okay. it had, it had a, uh, a base of pigments and then oils, um, mm -hmm. because you can see how oily this is. This is, mm -hmm. this is, uh, this was supposed mm -hmm. to be for Hindu. Um, uh, so you can see kind of the coloring for uh mm -hmm. for that so you can see how you would get like all these different shades inside of um uh inside of, of one container and this was the lightest shade this this shade here called 12 mm -hmm. was the the lightest shade um but it had some yellow in it so they they actually um label it as uh something to uh to do a chinese character with so you can see oh boy kind of yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> that's a crazy color. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. It's like, oh. Yikes. Oh, my oh. goodness. So you can now, see these, these are very yeah. stereotypical. Yeah. Stereotypical. These, yeah. But, you know, you have to... You have to remember these are early films or early, you know, theatrical Stage. productions where um, they're trying to be, like, pretty obvious on, you know, Oh, you know, this person is this ethnic yeah, group. Yeah, they weren't this being, 
so yeah. sensitive and culturally kind of relevant. No, very, you just, you no, just not at all. Not at all. Yeah. It's, it's very oh. stereotyping costumey, uh, as you yeah. can see, uh, because these are these are uh, nothing like you know regular skin tone. They're kind no. of caricatures of, of skin tone. But you can see this came with the set. So so these yeah. were kind of your base colors to make all these yeah. characters. Um, now the other thing they they included, which was uh, interesting, is a set of uh, liners, um, which are these kind of little tins here, um, oh. and these, yeah. So these were kind of really interesting. So instead of having pencils, they did have one pencil, which was this one right here, um, which says Max Max Factor Black. The pencil we have is a black one, which is you know a black pencil, yeah. still works. You know, oh. still does black. it feel like a eyeliner pencil, yeah. like a little soft and like like we have today? No, it's actually pretty hard. Oh, it's wow. pretty hard, I would say. Yeah, it's pretty hard. It feels like like a writing pencil more than than oh, a wow. than an eye pencil. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it might be uh, might be the type that you can you know the old fashioned ones that you could like put fire to or uh, warm them up with a flame. And then and then put them mm -hmm. so you you might be able to do that with this type of pencil, but uh, but these liners uh, were uh, kind of interesting because they're used to like draw lines on the face or or uh, on the eyes or but they came in very primary colors so oh. see you have like a uh, uh, yeah a very um, interesting uh, color like a gray a yellow a brown. Uh, and a blue. Oh, that blue. So oh, you so had pretty. all your, yeah. So so you have you have all your basic uh, shades here, um, so that you could you could mix these and come up with other shades uh, if you needed it. And they're creamy, you know. It's like a cream. Look, it's still still okay. Oh, wow. Look, I can put the cream on here. It's still <laughs> yellow. Um, pretty good. This one is uh, is a uh, gray. Which is a nice gray, actually. It's not bad at all. Yeah. They look almost like the gel liners uh, we have now. Yeah, it's kind okay. of like that, except that remember this this wouldn't have had the the um um the alcohols and, and the uh, mm. the things that we put now in order to make something um dry quickly and stay and not budge. Right. Um they didn't have that ingredient. So so these are, are just creams. Um Mm -hmm. So you would have to um, you would have to set these with with uh, powder yeah. in order to keep them from running. Uh, but but really interesting shades. Uh, the blue shade is rather neat too. A very deep blue. Ooh. I love that blue shade. <laughs> it's really pretty. Isn't that nice? It's a really nice deep wow. oceany blue. Um, so yeah. so very very interesting. Yeah, and, and with these, you you know, again, the student was um, with, was taught to mix these to make other shades. So with these colors, you could mix and match and make other shades, just like you would with paint, you know? Um, yeah. So color theory was a big a big thing uh, back then for, uh, for actors or for um, uh, makeup artists to be able to mix colors and come up with other shades. Um, and then for the rouge, they had a uh, special moist uh, rouge. Now this oh. this is um, this is a, a different color than than uh, other moist rouges. They came in different shades. Um, I don't know if I can get this one open, but uh, that's okay. The fact they that did so come many in different shades. This is a so rouge. Usable, yeah. Yeah. So this is actually blush. Whoa! So you can you can see. Yeah, you can see that the color. A it's rather blush. a nice shade. Wow. Oh yeah, very much so. But it's a very pretty color, though. Yeah. Uh, it uh, it's kind of like natural looking. It's almost like the color of blood, you know. Um, yeah. So if you put it on somebody, <laughs> it would actually look pretty natural. As like, uh, I'm going to put some here so you can see. It would look pretty natural as 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 oh, uh, skin. Wow. See. Yeah. That's that is such an interesting blush color. That's it's so unexpected, and that has yeah, isn't that isn't isn't a pigment to it still? Yes, 
Yes, and uh, yeah, and this would have been done with carmine, uh, probably. So carmine is is what gives you this type of shade of um, where it's so so vibrant like this, but it mm -hmm. looks so natural on skin because because of the fact that it is an organic pigment, even though it comes from the beetles, uh, mm -hmm. it is it is an organic natural pigment, so it mimics the color of of uh, blood and skin and, and actual oh. red that's a natural red um, yeah. then uh, then your uh, synthetic colors which tend to be more pink so they 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 right. kind of uh, don't go together with the actual coloring of, of actual blood and actual um, tissue so it's a it's a little bit more natural looking when you use it and you can see it here this color would adapt to pretty much anybody using it and it would look like like a natural flush uh kind of shade uh but moist mo moist rouge was a very uh common thing for actors uh it, it, because remember they use all of these things were made out of um out of creams so everything ev everything would be uh would be set with powder at the end so, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the other thing that came in here, which was really interesting, and it shows you kind of the artistic nature of the set too, is these blending stumps. Uh, and if you're uh, familiar with, uh, with uh, color and in, in doing charcoal drawings or any kind of drawings here, you're familiar with blending stumps. They're, uh, they're little stumps made out of paper that's rolled together really tight. Uh, and they're meant to spread things, you know, you, 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 uh, so you take your pencil and you would take your stump and see, mm -hmm. and then you would blend it. Yeah. See? Yeah, it was still so close so, to so the stump blend art world, the makeup at the time. Yes, yes, e exactly. So these would be blending tools that you can use to blend, you know, around your eyes. Or when you do a liner like this, you would use this to blend it in. Uh, so these were blending tools for you. Uh, of course, it came with cold cream, even though you weren't to use it underneath it, you can use it to remove the makeup. So uh -huh. this one has been around, obviously, so many years that uh, yeah. it doesn't look like cold cream anymore. Ooh. It kind of looks like a gelatinous, um, a gelat <laughs> gelatinous mask wow, that looks so on cool. here. It almost looks like a soap or a the candle. <laughs> Oh, it does, funny. doesn't it? I mean, it's still, it's still like waxy. Wow. See, if I, if I take wow. some out, it's still kind of waxy looking, uh, yeah. but it's not a cream anymore. The oils and that yeah. separated out. So it's a, oh, it's kind of a waxy, waxy uh, thing. Wow. Very interesting though. Um, see, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of like feels more like Vaseline uh, now than cream. Oh, um, sure. But, but it's, yeah. you know. And it you can smell it smells very rancid because of the oils, yeah. but you know, uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting one. Uh, and then of course they had the face powder, which was meant to uh, set all of this stuff. So mm -hmm. the face powder um, uh, came in uh, in a color that's pretty pretty pink. Yeah, actually, if you look at it. Um, but this was the color that you were supposed to set everything with. Um, I don't know um, how this would have uh, worked bec because it, it is pinky. You can yeah. see here, it's uh, it would add kind so, of a pinky. So much color looking. on top of everything. Yes, it, it would, it would. It wow. would add uh, kind of a flesh, fleshy tone you can see from, from this, kind of a pinky fleshy tone. Um, but they didn't really do translucent powders back then. Oh. All the powders did have a, a, a color to them still. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this came in there too. And then you were supposed to put it on with this, this puff right here, which yeah. had a, a very early, early version of the Max Factor logo, as you can see here. <laughs> That's so cool. It's kind of funny. And uh, other people made a uh, moist rouge. I mean, Max Factor sold moist rouge also by itself. That wasn't part of this set. Like you can see th this set has the, uh, yellow label uh, because it's part of the Supreme, uh, Max Factor Supreme line, which was yeah. the flexible makeup actors line. Um, okay. This was some, another another line. And, and look at this color of rouge. This is a different oh. uh, shade here. 
of rouge. Um, and uh, I can, it doesn't say what color it is actually, but um, we can take a look at it here. As we uh, look at that, Sarah it's had a question. little bit. Uh, oh, that's a little. Yes. Oh, wow. Gosh, that's an interesting. A little color. more brown. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very brownish looking oh. blush, actually, compared to this one. It's very, yeah. very brown. Yeah. How fascinating. You can see that there. Yeah. Yeah, um, you can Sarah see the difference of, in those. What is your background uh, with your history of art? Did you did you go to school with uh, for makeup history or art history? Um, and how did you learn uh, so much uh, about makeup history? Uh, art, I mean, I, I did, uh, yes, I have a degree from Art Center College of Design in Pasadena and uh, on, on the, uh, art and uh, photography. So mm -hmm. I have, I do have a degree in art, but I applied it toward this field because um, color is fascinating to me in all, in all shapes and sizes and, mm -hmm. and from paint that you paint on a canvas to this kind of paint, to me, it's all color. Uh, and it's all kind of the same. So um, I, I, I learned uh, all about pigments and makeup uh, on my own, really. And I started, uh, uh, like I said, about uh, 17 years ago now mm -hmm. to do this uh, before I even started the line. Um, so I've been studying it all, all along uh, on my own, uh, getting uh, materials and then studying from different texts. But, uh, but it, I'm just fascinated by all the color. And, and all the mm -hmm. things that you can get. Um, uh, this one, see, this one is another uh, uh, rouge, but it's um, it's called uh, Electric Lip Rouge. Um, and it's from a different company. Uh, it's uh, Professor J. Warnerson from Chicago. So this would have been like a competing product probably at the time that mm -hmm. uh, Max Factor, because if you can see, like he put his photo in there uh the same as uh, uh yeah. max factor put his photo in the middle of, of this one uh as you can see here see uh both of them have like a mugshot of themselves on the <laughs> on the top of the uh container which is kind of interesting that uh that you would put your face on there um well, especially well i so, guess it was uh, still for yeah. film and tv but just a man's very serious yeah. face isn't what I think of. Yeah, <laughs> very serious. Yeah. Makeup, uh, yeah, this one doesn't have much left on it, but I can scoop yeah. a tiny bit on here just to see the color difference. And it's a little bit more red. If you look at this one here, you can see it's more red than this oh, other oh, one. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's so see red. how much redder this one is? This one is more red, pinky and red as compared mm -hmm. to this one. And as compared to this one, that looks very brown. So, yeah. so this one is a totally different color of rouge. But look at all the different, different types of rouge that we had. Um, yeah. So this is all that came in this set. Um, the uh, the uh, rouge they had a uh, this was moist rouge. They also had a, a a dry rouge that came in a container like this, and then inside of it had a, a cake of color. Uh, this one, I think it's empty. It doesn't have the cake anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have it in here. But but it was uh, basically a very pink magenta looking blush, Ooh. and and it came with uh, it came with the set as well. Um, the other thing that you would have needed uh, was this uh, that was also part of the Supreme line um, that was sold to to students and to uh, you know other other. Uh, other consumers, really the theater people, because this this line was really marketed to professionals. Um, mm -hmm. So this was eyelash and eyebrow mask. So it was called oh, mask wow. at the time. Uh, before it was called mascara, it was called mask. Oh, oh, at least yeah. Max Factor called it that. Uh, to color eyelashes and eyebrows, moisten brush and apply with stroking motion. So there you go. Uh, so this one, oops. There goes the uh, the lid here. So I had a, a lid um, with a mirror uh -huh. on the on on this part, uh, and then and then it had the the brick of of mascara, cake mascara that said mask on it, and then I had uh, a an applicator here, 
um, which is made out of, uh, this is hog's hair. Oh, hog's hair, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the brushes actually that Max Factor had mostly were made out of hog's hair, uh, which is this kind of white hair. It's very, very tough though. Very, very tough hair mm -hmm. um, and hard. Um, yeah. And so you would take the, the this, this, and again, moisten it, and then, and then go back and forth, just like our mascara, basically. And uh, this yeah. had a little, it was made in little bricks, as you can see here, see? Yeah. That one really looks like a chocolate, a chocolate bar. Some people talk about our yeah, that's mascara it? thinking it's chocolate, it but is. that one really looks like a Kit Kat. <laughs> yeah, it does. It looks like a chocolate and it, it's very heavy, kind of like it. Uh -huh. It's, it, it's um, yeah, it's kind of like very much of a, like a crayon of some kind. If you try to do it like this, see, it even colors like this, see? Oh, wow. You can see it, it, it does color like, even like a crayon would. It's kind of waxy. Yeah. If I touch this now, after I do this with it, it's very waxy. I can touch it and it feels like wax, like mm -hmm. kind of like a crayon does when you when you yeah. touch it. After you do it, you feel like kind of like a waxy. So this kind of feels very waxy here. Um, yeah. The color isn't as deep as you would want, uh, but but it is but it is um, it, it is waxy. So it would have put a wax layer on on the lashes um so that they would they would stay in place and keep the color on the lash right. so this came in there and um yeah we had a question about the um the dry rouge is that used as like a powder blush today or was that used differently yes the, the dry rouge yes it was used as a powder uh rouge mm -hmm. uh, as a powder blush is today um and uh the difference was with uh, this is that um, they would apply it uh, in in two stages basically when they oh. did their makeup and they put their grease paint on uh, so they would put on the grease paint uh, mm -hmm. like this uh, so they would put this on then uh, do the liners and the, the rouge uh, and then set it with the face powder uh, mm -hmm. so set the, with this face powder. Um, and then uh, if they wanted to accentuate more, they would take the, uh, the uh, dry rouge and put it over the top okay. of that. Oh. So it was, it was done after the powder because um, the dry rouge would have needed a powder base in order to not clump up with all, the, yeah. with all these, uh, these creams. Wow. So, uh, so yeah, so it was used, uh, it was using the two-step process, basically. So you had uh, moist rouge and then dry rouge if you needed more um, enhancement of, of that. Um, other competitors at the time made, um, you know, other powders. This was one of them. It's a huge tin of powder. Uh, it's called Lockwood's Premier. Uh, and it's a competitor to Stein's. Uh, Stein's at the time also made a tin that looked exactly like this, actually. Uh -huh. And it even had all of the different colors, which on the side of this is very funny. It has, um, it has the type of a uh, you know, type of character you wanted to create, oh. and then it would tell you what number, what number of powder you needed to purchase. Uh -huh. So you have white, uh, lavender, pink. The powder came in, in all these colors. White, lavender, uh -huh. pink, darker pink, juvenile, juvenile tan, Juvenile Hero, <laughs> uh, Light Flesh, Flesh, brun Brunette, Light Sunburn, Dark Sunburn, Healthy Old Farmer. Oh. What a color. <laughs> yeah, healthy Old Farmer. Healthy Old Farmer. Uh, uh, <laughs> farmer, yeah. What a young man, you know, uh, sallow old man. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Olive, Studio, Italian, I mean, all kinds. Uh, is it very wow. interesting? Very interesting. Uh, so this is like a very heavy. It's got a lot of powder, so you can imagine the actors uh, use a lot of this stuff. Um, the uh, cold cream, actually, this is a Rexall one uh, wow. from also the 20s and that, and it's a theatrical. See, it says theatrical cold cream. So the cold cream came in this huge jar as well. Um, so your powder and your cold cream. Uh, and this is this is from Stein. See, 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 this is 
uh, sold by Rexall, but it was still manufactured by uh, Stein. And mm -hmm. it says on the side here, uh, the M. Stein Cosmetic Company, New York, uh, and that's who manufactured it. Um, wow. So it's, uh, it's very, uh, yeah, it's very, very cool. And this says uh, it's manufactured under the Food and Drugs Act of 1906. So oh. uh, there you go. Very interesting. So uh, it's yeah, called Knickerbocker Cold Cream oh. for 25 cents. Isn't that great? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we had one question yes. from earlier about um, when did translucent powder become available? When did that start? Translucent powder was a, a more recent uh, uh, thing because uh, before then all the powders really came uh, tinted. Uh, powders mm -hmm. were tinted even in the 50s and in the 60s powders oh, were wow tinted still. Um, so, so we didn't have really um, powders that were without color until really later, later on, I would say probably wow. um, 80s, 90s or so that we had oh. more powders that maybe were less tinted. They had, they had powders that were supposed to be translucent, but weren't really translucent. You know, mm -hmm. they, they could make a translucent before by just lowering the percentage of, of, of a certain type of powder that, that has more white in it, like titanium, for example, that has a lot more white in it. So if you use less of that powder and use some other type of powder uh, that doesn't have as much pigment to it, like a rice powder, for example, you could blend something that would be uh, more sheer looking. Um, yeah. But but uh, I think people didn't use powder necessarily um, as a sheer thing. They used it partly to cover. So so they wouldn't have necessarily wanted powders that didn't have any coverage. Um, mm -hmm. They would have probably wanted powders that had had uh, you know skin tone in it so that they would help hide flaws in this. So. So I think it was it wasn't marketed that way. There were probably powders made that were more sheer, but they weren't necessarily marketed as, trans, as translucent necessarily because yeah. I don't think the consumer demand was there for a long time. Huh. But and it's interesting. There... All the older powders usually have a lot of pigment, though. Yeah. Uh, we had a question about cold cream mm -hmm. because it was used as a base, but yeah. also to remove makeup. Can you just explain a little bit about how cold cream is yeah. used? Yeah. Uh, so the cold cream was um, was a kind of a staple product for uh, for a very long time because we before we even had the actual makeup like like this this grease paint um, or even grease pencils and things like this. Uh, all we had for adding color to the face was powders, powders that were colored, just like this powder is, but other powders that had color in it. So in order to make the powder stick to the face, they, they needed something sticky that would make the powders uh -huh. stick on and stick on in a way that you would get more powder to stick on so that it would, it would uh, make the complexion smoother. So the way they did it is they used the, a product like this called cold cream, um, which is a kind of a very, uh, thick, um, uh, oily type of cream uh, that would absorb the powder. So they would put a layer of this on and, uh, and then put the powder on top. And so the powder would stick to the cream and then it would become mm -hmm. kind of a base. And so this was kind of the earliest kind of uses of the cold cream. Obviously, it was used as well to take off makeup, especially in theatrical settings, because, because of the fact that it's so oily, um, it takes off all the other oily kind of stick makeup that was being used uh -huh. at the time. So cold cream was, uh, was used in both the application and the removal of the makeup. Mm -hmm. That's so, cool. so it was like very pasty stuff. Yeah. <laughs> pasty stuff. That's what it was. Yes, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> and then Sarah just had a question of um, how do you store yeah. all of your antiques? I usually keep them in a in a cabinet, in a glass cabinet, and I put them in there. Uh, and they, as long as the temperature isn't too hot, 
um, then then they they stay pretty pretty well. Um, these are you know as you saw they're really really old and they still yeah. uh, they still uh, actually work, which is kind of very interesting that they yeah. still actually function after so many years. Um, so obviously Max Factor knew what he was doing because he made these formulas practically uh, bulletproof actually because after so many years we can still use them uh, if we wanted to. Not that we want to, but you know they yeah. are still spreadable. They still spread and they still are in one piece, which is kind of a lot to say yeah. for something this old. Um, so, um, so, uh, so yes, it's um, it's fascinating to look at these formulas to see how they were put together and how well they kind of stand the test of time. Um, and you have to remember that he was making product to solve problems for the uh, movie industry. So all of these products were addressing problems that actors had and movie uh, industry had as far as like filming and uh, capturing things on film. So all the products that he manufactured kind of went after solving different issues with, uh, with uh, this one, with flexibility of the makeup and making the makeup look, right. look and feel better for the actor, uh, look more natural on camera. And then later on with panchromatic makeup for uh, a faster black and white film that was available at the time called panchromatic film. Uh, and then later on for Technicolor film, he, co he kept innovating the product to, to make it fit and actually work with all those new, new mediums and new developments in film. Yeah. Oh, that's so fast. And then that carried over into the consumer part of makeup as well, eventually down the line. Yes, uh, eventually it did. Uh, it did pretty much at, at the in the thirties, at the late late thirties, mm -hmm. nineteen thirty eight or so, when the first Technicolor movies came out, and you had um, you had the first use of pancake makeup in those movies mm -hmm. for Technicolor. Uh, that proved so successful as far as how it looked and how it felt for people. And, and if you don't remember, pancake makeup is, is a cake of makeup. It was, it was innovative at the time because it was a mixture of cream and powder together. So it was a powder that contained cream, so it made it easier to put on and you, uh, you could um, moisten a, a, uh, a puff and then apply it on and it would set and it would give you this very matte but uh, very even looking finish. So almost porcelain like finish to the face. And it, it worked really, really well for Technicolor film. And therefore Max Factor in uh, later uh, years, in, in two or three years after that, that film came out, he was able to manufacture more shades of this and actually put it out to consumers to actually buy this pancake makeup and and use it on their own skin uh so so it took a little bit of time it wasn't instantaneous that it was available it wasn't yeah. available as soon as that movie came out uh because he wasn't actually in favor of putting it out to sell to the public oh. he thought it was it was just meant for yeah because most of the things he made remember were for professionals he wanted to help mm -hmm. the industry uh not necessarily sell products to consumers um but his uh his brother uh, and it, other family members really did want to do that because they saw the potential in selling, uh, selling product. Uh, so these other people in his company kind of pushed that forward and, uh, and actually made pancake makeup uh, a few years later. And it was wildly successful. Uh, women uh, really took to it. Uh, and uh, because it obviously before you only had powder so now that you had pancake, it really gave you more flawless coverage and, uh, and it was easier, easy to use, semi easy to use, obviously easier than trying to do two steps uh, as like applying cream and then, and then powder. Um, so, so yeah, so it took, it took really, really well and became one of the most successful products uh, of, of that whole era. And let's see, we had one last question of just what lipstick are you wearing today? Sure. I'm wearing Victory Red. Oh, yay. Beautiful. And that's just back in stock. Yay. Um, and I'm wearing Ferris Red. Yay. Our, our new, not really new, it's a color comeback from a previous collection. Come, come, yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, those are both available. And thank you guys so much for all of your questions. This is great. If you want to check out Gabriella's personal oh, yeah, Instagram, thank you. she's going to have these pictures, uh, pictures of certain things on her account. So you can get a, a closer look if you like. And Gabrielle, thank you again. These were so Thanks. fascinating. I still can't get over how bright and bold those colors are after almost 100 years. <laughs> it's just so nice. I know, isn't that? I mean, these, these pigments are incredible. And remember, these are all natural pigments. You know, we didn't have synthetics when these were made. So these are all natural pigments coming from rocks and other natural natural sources. So <laughs> it's 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 really amazing that there are so bright and uh and still vibrant and still usable. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Gabriella, and thank you all so much for watching us. We will thank be you. back next week with more of fun and wonderful things from Gabriella's collection. And have a wonderful day. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye bye.